Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, we got some great progress on scenes and UI work with the required components PR merging, a new Bevy CLI working group, and some great progress in the Curves group. We've also got some exciting crate releases, including an official Bevy Magic Light 2D crates.io release and a new AV and pickup plugin for portal like shenanigans. And as a quick note, you're watching this on YouTube, but we also have a complete written copy with all of the links on the website, thisweekinbevy.com. So if you like what you see and you're looking for the links, that's where to find them. It'll be in the description. And with that, let's get into it with required components. Required components is part of the recent scenes BSN work and now has been merged. This was requested by the community as part of that work. So it's really nice to see it get in. This has a huge impact on bundle use cases, although bundles have not gone anywhere. And side note, don't worry, the team is putting great thought into how these APIs will evolve. And this is the beginning work, not the end state. Required components show up in the end user APIs as a required attribute macro on components, as you can see here with require node and UI image. The most succinct way I've seen to show the difference is actually included here in the PR, and that's to take a look at the button bundle or any given bundle. In this case, the button bundle has a whole bunch of components that are associated with it. And this has a couple of issues, probably most notably that you actually never use button to get a button because the button bundle will set button automatically, which often is hidden inside of a dot dot default, as you can see here, or rather here. <laughs> So the impact required components has is that you can then call node and UI image components and specify them as required for this button component. And then you can use that button component alongside any optional components, which gets a significantly more succinct and straightforward way to spawn in a button. Particularly notable, you'll see that node and UI image are here. There was also transform and border color and other things in here like interaction. Required components are recursive. So if button requires node and node requires transform, transform will get included alongside node and button. Note that generally required components are for invariants or components with good default values. And that can be additional components that the component in question doesn't work without. For example, this button wouldn't work without a node, but keep in mind that this is the beginning state of things and that the lines are still being drawn for how to exactly to use this. So we'll keep you up to date as practices merge. If you want to get up to date with more of the scene UI system, next generation stuff, you can find it in 14437 or in the working group in Discord. And that brings us to Meshlets. Meshlets see some improvements in 14623, which includes work towards faster Meshlet rasterization paths for small triangles, avoiding having to allocate and write out a triangle buffer and more. The PR is actually wonderfully documented, as you can see here, and includes technical details for changes. Most notably, if you were already experimenting with meshlets, is that the meshlet plugin now comes with a cluster buffer slots, which is again, well-documented. So I'll just briefly say that if you set this number too low, you'll see either missing or flickering meshlets. And this is sort of per scene or per use case. So if you have really, 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 really big meshlets that are viewed a whole lot, this number will be higher. And if you have smaller meshlets that are viewed by fewer cameras, this number will be smaller. And for meshlets to observers, observers were in 0.14 for the first time, and they continue to be developed. In 14.857, we get a debug implementation for Trigger. This enables a more streamlined developer experience when debugging scaffolded observers. So as you can see here, you can write dot .observe, we get the trigger in here as the event, and then you can just, instead of say panicking, maybe debug it and get the whole trigger output. The whole trigger output you can see later on in the PR includes the event, the propagation state and the observer trigger. The propagation data is related to 13991, which implemented bubbling observers and the observer trigger is trigger metadata. Observer systems must also have a trigger as their first argument and 14840 adds a nice new error message when this isn't the case, including a little reminder. In this case, if you forget to do it, you'll get a message that says for function observer systems ensure the first argument is a trigger. And in bevy reflect in 14838, we get the type struct this type contains both the type ID and the type path table of the given type, allowing it to be used like a type ID, but have the debugging capacity of a type path. Now, if you're not already using this, this won't make you use it. If you are already using this, you probably know what this means. So we're gonna move on to screenshots. As of 14.833, screenshots can now use any render target. And most notably, screenshotting now has a new component and observer-based API. So you can spawn in the screenshot component, and then observe it 
with a nice helper function that comes from Bevy as well, save to disk. And if you're not sure what a render target is, that includes windows, images, and texture views. In 14.9.17, we get two new conditions. The first is condition changed, which changes whenever the inner condition changes. And then we also get condition changed two, which will return true whenever the inner condition matches true or false, depending on user configuration. This allows you to set up a test and return true or false, and then do something based on whether that value changed and also what that value changed to. As of 14.650, the plane 3D primitive gizmo now displays as a grid to better show the existence of a plane. Previously, it was axes, which had some issues when trying to view distant or off axis plane locations. And now we get this nice grid instead. And 14.865 is a GitHub discussion that takes a look at generic and monomorphized code to see where there could be some savings in Bevy's final binary size by moving some code around without changing existing APIs. 14.865 is the first follow-up to 14.864 in that GitHub discussion and investigates splitting up generic type cell, get or insert. This work results in a 2% size reduction, approximately 428 kilobytes of the final binary when building the 3D scene example. Further work is happening in 14.934, which is seeing even more improvements already. And of course, we'll cover that in the future if and when it merges. Speaking of shrinking, 11.487 details the desire to shrink the Bevy Utils crate and put the functionality inside of it into better places. As part of this, CowArc was moved to the new, generally usable outside of Bevy, Atomic Cow Crate, and its usage inside Bevy was replaced with the new crate in 14.975. CowArc is an enum that represents owned, borrowed, or static data, that is, cheap immutable references that can be converted into an owned form when mutation or ownership is required. And really, somebody go make an atomic cow logo for this, <laughs> because that would just be amazing. Little small cows around an atom or something. And we're dipping into the working group work with Bevy Mod picking the upstreamening. 14757 adds a sprite backend to the upstreamed Bevy picking crate and adds a new example in examples picking sprite picking, showing off the functionality. So go and click on some Bevy birds. The curve crew has also been hard at work with new curve gizmos that have been added for 2D and 3D in 14971 based on the previous Bevy Math curve work. And as of 14815, you can now sample curves from into iterator types. This generally allows you to use functions like sample iter on iterable types that will then sample a curve at those times t. I feel like there's been a lot of Bevy Math work going into the 0 0.15 release, so it'll be really interesting to see what we end up with. And finally, a new working group dedicated to building a Bevy CLI has been created. The working group's initial scope can be found in this HackMD document and includes a bunch of relevant information. So give it a read if you're interested in what a Bevy CLI might look like. The working group's discussions can be found in the official Bevy Discord in the working group's channel, as can all of the other working groups that we've mentioned. And of course, you can't forget Alice's Merge Train, which is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. I mention this thread every week, but it really is a series of great insights, especially if you're interested in Bevy, but also if you're just interested in how open source software even gets maintained in the first place. And that brings us to the showcases. This visual novel scene editor powers adding new sprites, removing all or one sprite, switching to the target window and scene, editing selected sprites, and saving scene files. It has a novel script system with IDE support and a virtual window system. This is a card game where instead of mana, you need to have a certain amount of creatures already in play to be allowed to play specific cards, and you only play one card per turn. For now, the AI opponent just plays the first valid card in its hand. And behold, lines, a varying thickness in two dimensions. This is Bevy 2D Line, which started as a showcase and then morphed into a crate release. It renders polylines in a vertex shader, so if that's something you need, definitely go check it out. Ships, planets, space. Here's an in-progress look at a space game currently called Space, dude. The author is hoping to get a playable level out next year. And from space vehicles to driven vehicles. This is early progress on a vehicle physics demo. It currently involves the forces needed to drive the car back and forth while steering. This work is currently open source, so go check out Bevy Vehicles WG, Bevy Car Box. And if you implement enough character controllers, you'll eventually come across the term collide and slide. Functionally, this means when your character hits an angled wall, it shouldn't stop, but rather continue sliding along that wall. 
The goal of this project showcase is to make an FPS example, that's a first person shooter, that others can learn from. And today's showcase is the collide and slide function from that project. Next up, we've got some UI improvements for this game. Next up, the author says, new creature models. The UI here looks really good and for some reason reminds me of Super Smash Brothers. And next up, we've got either for solo dev jam number four. Launch and recall drones in this solo dev jam entry. Launch drones will orbit the player and attack enemies. And we've previously covered Dr. Luke's VJ set, which is bevy powered, and it now has a full recording uploaded on YouTube for you to enjoy. This seems to be the full set, so you can enjoy about two hours of visuals and music. This scene in this Pokemon style shooter has about 770,000 faces. The loading time is about 16 seconds, and there are some great comments about serializing the computed colliders to optimize that loading time over in the Discord thread. This ominous, brutalist building work in progress got a couple of updates this week, including the first building itself, as well as a sky and an external environment, which unfortunately got destroyed by compression due to social sites, as well as a third update, including monsters. The building itself is being loaded using Quevy or Q-E-V-Y from a quake.map. And you may remember these spore-like creatures, which are procedurally created, inspired by a talk we've linked to on the site. And they use 3D segments of a cylinder on particles, which will make more sense if you watch the talk. It's already really fun to just watch this happen for a little bit. So I'm excited to see how this progresses. Progress on this top-down shooter, which uses gizmos instead of meshes in an attempt to focus on game logic. It started off with the Bevy Quick Start template and continued with a basic character controller. That led into 2D rotation, avian physics colliders, rigid bodies, and even more updates during the week. This is a short clip showing progress on an almost seamless blending blended known animations with common pre-imported animations. Next up, we've got some terrain generation for this 4X game. The terrain was recently overhauled, including the author's first WGSL shader. I think this has a very playful look to it, almost as if you're building up construction paper from the ground layer up. And that's it for showcases this week. Let's hop right into the crate releases with Bevy Capture. Bevy Capture is a new plugin for capturing frames from a Bevy application. It comes with some built-in encoders for creating GIFs and videos and can be extended with custom encoders. And next up, we've got Bevy Web Pop-Ups, which enables alert boxes on the web and on phones. This means you can use alerts with or without text boxes using a unified API across platforms. Bevy Foliage Tool also got its first release. Bevy Foliage Tool is a crate that allows you to set height maps on a foliage scene and then paint density on foliage layers, each corresponding to a different type of foliage. Instance mesh entities are spawned in chunks for render distance occlusion based on the height map, density, and noise. And here's an exciting new crate, Avian Pickup. Avian Pickup is a plugin for picking up, manipulating, and throwing rigid body props in avian physics. Pick up nearby dynamic rigid bodies, pull far away ones towards you, and throw them around or drop them gently. And very excitingly, Bevy Magic Light 2D is a dynamic 2D global illumination system for Bevy. It's based on SDF ray marching, that's sign distance fields, and screen space irradiance cache probes. Two new maintainers have been added to Bevy Magic Light 2D. Congratulations if you're watching. And they've put in work to get a 0.8 release out for Bevy 0.14.1. This is effectively the first official crates.io release for the library, even though the code has been around for a while and powers the lighting in Jarl. Note that this being the very first crates.io release, there was a slight bug in the 0.8 release. So expect a 0.8.1 release very soon that 3x's performance. And that's it for this week. As a reminder, there is a website, thisweekinbevy.com. If you're looking for any of the links to the showcases, to the crates, or to anything that I've mentioned, they're all on the website, including this list of pull requests that were merged, in case you want to do your own scan of everything that made it in this week. We've also got lists of pull requests that were opened if you're looking to contribute and do some review. Review is highly valued in the Bevy community, even if you are not a maintainer. Go check out a PR, see if it runs, see if you can run the example, and see if it works for you. If you're looking to get a little bit deeper into contributing, here's a list of the issues that were opened this week. Recent issues are usually a good source of easy bugs to go fix. And that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one and have a great rest of your week.